Hello, Jake Middleton here. So you want to write a macro. This is part one. So macros are great. They can automate a lot of things in SolidWorks. And the first thing you need to do is go and enable the macro toolbar. You can search for macro and enable the toolbar here. There's a couple buttons. There's run macro, record macro, new macro, and edit macro. This is gonna be a very basic tutorial, but basically all you need to do is click on the record button, and now anything you do, uh, SolidWorks will record the commands into a macro. So let's just do something pretty simple here, like create a circle and extrude it. Now you should note that anything you do is being recorded, and this uh, includes rotating the model, like I am right now. We'll look into that in just a moment, but let's make this two inches and say okay. So we recorded a quick uh, macro here. We're just gonna click stop and give our macro a name. Now it actually creates a .swp file outside of SolidWorks. It's important to note that it does not store the macro in SolidWorks. So the macro editor pops up as soon as we save it and we can see it recorded every step of the way what we did. But first, let's test it out. So let's delete what we just did and rerun the macro and see if it can automatically create that circle and extrusion for us. Simply select the macro, my first macro, and click play. We can see it actually kind of rotates around and spins. It's actually imitating our mouse movements there. So now let's go back into this window and look at the code that it recorded for us. So one tip is that, like I mentioned, it does record all of the movements. So if possible, don't move around while you're recording your macro. Just keep it all in one spot. It'll make everything a little bit easier. The second tip is that you can actually go in and delete anything that says anything to do with view. So view rotate or view uh, selection, anything like that. You can basically go and delete all of this stuff here, anything to do with a view. You don't need it. That really cleans up our macro and makes it a lot smaller and a lot easier to understand. The other thing to know about macros is that you can just press enter and kind of space it out a little bit um, so you can understand the code a little bit easier and kind of see this is an extrusion, this is a sketch, this is uh, creating a circle, and this is selecting the plane. So it actually makes a little bit of sense once you sort of break it down. So now let's go and test out our macro one more time to make sure we didn't accidentally delete anything that we needed. So we'll just click play and make sure that that new uh, trimmed up macro still works just fine. And it does, but now it doesn't rotate around as much and uh, it still creates a cylinder. This has been part one and I'm Jake Middleton.